Welcome to Prophetic Convergence. I'm Lance Wall. Now I'm with Barry Siegel. We're looking at history as it's unfolding through the lens of the Word of God. You can't get a better filter than the Bible because the Bible actually delivers you from fake news to give you the good news. The good news is everything that's happening in the world is happening according to plan. Darkness is beginning to descend upon the earth at an accelerated rate, but the light is breaking out. It looks like Joe Biden will not be able to get out of the exposure for his family crime syndicate. We're going to be looking at the 50 signatures that expose the intelligence community to corruption with the Biden laptop scandal. And the World Health Organization is taking over your nation next year. But we've got to stop and see what happened in England that everyone missed during that coronation. We're going to explain it to you here on Prophetic Convergence. Welcome to Prophetic Convergence. We, we need to start now by doing a, uh, an analysis of what happened a while back with the coronation. It was a surprise. I have an intercessor friend of mine who was very concerned, and British by the way, that, uh, that there, there was going to be a pledge uh, to Prince Charles as king that was going to be a loyalty oath of some sort that was going to be woven into the ceremony. Well, fortunately, there was not that, but there was some other insidious developments, but some surprisingly good developments, and I think we ought to talk about this. The music that was composed for the coronation had a peculiarly overt Christian, Judeo-Christian, uh, 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 shall we say, flavor to it, which makes sense because the Queen of England, the King of England is supposed to be aligned with the church, right, of England, which is supposed to be a Protestant uh, church. But listen to the themes. Andrew Lloyd Webber, the great uh, American Broadway playwright, you know, or, or, you know uh, author and concert, you know, expert for what he did, the Phantom of the Opera, Cats, etc. The coronation anthem that gave the King goosebumps when he heard it is uh, a psalm of joy to the Lord taken from the Psalms of David. But uh, the, the, the other aspects of this was Nigel Hiss and Sarah Klass and Judith uh, Weir. They all brought forth Be Thou My Vision and various other themes which weave into the tradition of Christianity within the empire of Great Britain. And then, of course, you see Charles walking as he does awkwardly, but he's holding like, you know, this symbolism with a cross on it. And so the, I'm just saying that if, if you were just observing it, with the amount of Islamic in, uh, immigration in Europe and in England, you'd be surprised to see how there still was this holding on to the nostalgia of an era of Christ being central to the great empire of England. But there are other aspects to this. Barry Siegel is going to show us now the depressing underbelly of my <laughs> optimistic opening. Go ahead, Barry. Explain to me what, what I missed. Well, I'm optimistic, too. I mean, I think it was a very reverent honoring towards uh, the, the place of Jesus as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So I don't want to be totally negative about this. I know that uh, interesting that King Charles III he is, uh, has a very warm relationship with the Jewish community in the United Kingdom, as well as it's very interesting to note that as his mother, Queen Elizabeth, was, he was anointed with oil, anointing oil, from Jerusalem that was blessed by the patriarchs and the various church leaders uh, in Jerusalem, oil that came and spices from Bethlehem and Jerusalem allow, uh, around, and he was anointed with that oil. Now, maybe that will uh, lend some credence to maybe the future direction. I don't know yet. But, um, you know, Queen, uh, King Charles, I want to say on behalf of Israel, our prime minister said, together with all of Israel's citizens, my wife Sarah, speaking of Benjamin Netanyahu, and I send our warm blessings to King Charles III and to Queen Camilla on their historic coronation. Also, Israel's President Isaac Herzog was amongst the many foreign dignitaries that paid their respects to the king. 
And of course, he has a very warm relationship with the chief rabbi in Britain, Sir Ephraim Mervis. But now the other side of this, to answer your question, is I'll never forget 20 or 30 years ago, King Charles today made mention that the day he becomes king, he doesn't want to be a defender of just the faith, meaning Christianity. He wants to be the defender of faiths, all faiths. So, of course, he had not only Christian leaders there, but he had leaders from uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, of course, and Sikhism. So he's, uh, you know, and of course we know the United Kingdom is made up of all these people groups and religious groups. So the real question here, and if I understand correctly, that he's one of the co-sponsors with Klaus Schwab in the IMF of what's been coined or known and labeled as the Great Reset. His name is frequently mentioned. Uh, what will be his role in all this? We do know that he is very involved in the global climate agenda for the world, but as king, just as in previous kings and queens, he's supposed to remove himself from politics, from political positions, and rule and reign as king. So I think that's where it comes back to the scripture in 1 Timothy 2. We need to pray for all those in authority, including kings. And uh, we will have to see if this becomes uh, synchronized with the new world order and the great reset, or if he will actually come closer to the faith as was exemplified and revealed in this coronation on May 6th. Very interesting to see. I do know uh, people that uh, went to school with uh, Prince William and Princess Kate and that actually um, they went through the Alpha course uh, many years ago. So hopefully this, um, you just never know. We can't stop praying. But that's the balancing side of it. What will this bring about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, but Barry, just wait a second. I want to, this is a little breaking news here. Who went through the Alpha course there in the royal family? Who is this? Many years ago, I heard that Prince William and Princess Kate, when they were back in university and school, had gone through and attended the Alpha course. Well, very good. Well, I didn't, I didn't know that. Well, that gives us a little information. I, I you know, I do want to segue into... Um, other political news. We have uh, King Charles, of course, I understand, and you guys get this now, that uh, we got to pray for him. He's in a transition moment. Do we have any Christians at all that are evangelical, that are informed, that are influential, that have authority in the hierarchies of England that can reach him? Father, we pray for King Charles that as he is seeking, and Camilla, his, his wife, that you will put bold, charismatic, spirit-filled voices into their life. It'll, it can happen anywhere, Lord. It could be a driver. It could be a security agent. Someone is going to be raised up to be a voice for Jesus. Amen. So that they can hear the Word of God and hear it clearly. We release that, Father. Let us not be guilty of, uh, of kvetching and not interceding. Lord, we release in Jesus' name belief that you have saints in Caesar's house, somebody there in the garden, in the uh, curating, uh, the art there is going to have access and the open door. May boldness come upon them to share faith and answered prayer. I pray that all world rulers have somebody near them like a Daniel who has supernatural ability to get results that suddenly exalts the God of heaven above all the other gods of the earth. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lance, let me... I feel good about that prayer. Let me, just, let me just add to this very quickly, that King Charles also, leading up to this, purged the monarchy or the family of Prince Andrew, who was, uh, you know, cohorting with the Jeffrey Epstein scandal, and, of course, Harry, who, uh, although his son... But nevertheless, there's been a spirit that has come through to try and bring down the monarchy. So I think prayers are being answered, and I think we should continue in the way you were praying. I say amen to that. Amen and amen. God is in control of the, of the great narratives of history, folks. He is, he is bending the ark in the direction he wants. 
Now, the Biden administration, in the next two minutes, I want to explain to you something you probably already know, that Anthony Blinken has been put on the hot seat because it has been exposed by a high-level CIA ex uh, officer um, in the administration of the intelligence community that Blinken was tasked with getting 50 signatures on a, uh, on a document so that Biden, in a talking point in his debate with Trump, could dismiss definitively the Hunter Biden laptop story as being Russian, according to 50 leaders of the intelligence community, surprising Trump with that little information. And then Brennan, 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 remember this, this guy never gets caught. He's like Haman in the Book of Esther. He, uh, he was exposed as just, there's an email that says, hey, can I add your name to this? And he writes back, sure. He didn't investigate the contents of the laptop. He just wanted to make sure that Donald Trump didn't get elected. And he used the official status as a former CIA director for Obama in order to add panache and credibility to what was clearly a politically motivated cover-up and lie to the American people. The CIA, the FBI, the intelligence communities that will, that will send 15 armed agents to go to the front porch of a pro-life Catholic in Philadelphia to scare the daylights out of him and his children at 8 a.m. This type of government, um, of uh, a, a Gestapo spirit has got to be broken. The American people will not settle for this. We won't accept it. The question is, will the good people in the United States, will the good people in Israel, will the good people in Europe find a way to come together in their own populist common ground so that they can put pressure upon the structures that are increasingly getting taken over by principalities and powers as Yeshua is returning to establish his throne rights over planet Earth and Satan is coming down out of his high places. When we come back, we're going to talk about the United States giving up its authority and independence to the global health organizations. You know, I wrote a book and I talked about Haggai the prophet talking about God is going to shake all the nations, including economic systems. And then just recently, I got challenged by a verse. It says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. And I began to think, you know what? I'd hate to find out there was a promise and a warning here on silver and gold, and I never even thought about it. And that's the reason why I want you guys to do something right now. You want to get a 20-page special report on silver and gold. Go to lancewellnot.com forward slash Birch, because Birch Gold is one organization that is being used by a lot of very credible people right now in order to position themselves with silver and with gold. You need to now start to look into this and learn what it is that maybe God was trying to say that the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Go to lancewalnut.com forward slash Birch and find out for yourself. The AI threat is, is actually more real than we think. And a lot of us aren't keeping up with, the, with this understanding of what's happening. But you see, now we have the ability to micro-message people in exactly the language they speak. That means that ChatGPT and the various other um, entities that are coming out with AI and artificial intelligence can manipulate public discourse so exquisitely. Satan, in a sense, is, is infiltrating the, the corrupt hearts of man with the technology to be able to manipulate masses of people with uh, disinformation that is so exquisitely structured that unless you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth and the discerning of spirits, you yourself, even the elect could possibly, if it were possible, Jesus said, would be deceived. Now that's the power, of, I'm going to show you in a later broadcast, how artificial intelligence, you think you're talking to another human being. And in fact, you're talking to an evil genius who knows how to manipulate you. The only thing that can break that is the power of the anointing and the Word of God. I pray for everyone watching today's broadcast that you will grow in your hunger for the Word and your hunger for the Spirit because love never fails and we're on the winning side. See you again next week. Did you enjoy this latest episode? Please remember to share it with your friends because the more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to navigate the world.
the spirit of betrayal is now getting broken off your business. Every experience broken off your finance. Every challenge getting broken off your marriages. Every triumph has been preparing you for this moment. The Lord is taking territory in his people and where his people live. Join us for Dream Trip 2023 in Carlsbad, California, where you will unlock your door to destiny. There is a hunger for awakening. Gain clarity. The challenge is that many of us don't understand where that awakening is going to take us. Align with your purpose. And a true awakening of the nature of which God is sending isn't just for our own personal refreshing or revitalization. And receive the commission to move forward boldly. It's actually to shift and to change the status quo. Through immersive experiences, you will be equipped with tools and resources to help you unlock your full potential. Join us for Dream Trip 2023 in Carlsbad, California. Your time is now. Don't miss out on this life-changing experience. <laughs>